My name's Guy Kesteven and I'm the author of the guidebook for Cycling UK's King Alfred's Way route, a fantastic uh, 350 kilometre, 220 mile route around the south of England using ancient trackways, backways, by roads, just a fantastic route put together by Kieran at Cycling UK, taking kind of all, you know, an incredible depth of history and beautiful landscapes around the Ridgeway, Salisbury Plain, Surrey Hills uh, in the south of England. So this is day three, final day. I'm doing it in three days uh, and I'm on Tilford Common again, rejoined the route. Uh, bike is all ready to go. I'm ready to go. It's a little bit windy. It's a little bit moist still, but, you know, standing here in this beautiful... <laughs> Heathland, absolutely silent. The sandy trails are really rolling well, despite, you know, a bit of overnight rain. And it's just, ah, oh, just, you know, they talk about the modern parlance is forest bathing or just breathing in this quiet, this solitude. It's just, ah, oh, just so looking forward to another day on this route. I really am. So uh, I'm going to put the GoPro on my chest and you know, we'll roll on through the day and I'll try and pick out interesting features, any kind of route guide hacks that you might need to know about and just talk you through my journey. Uh, so thanks very much to Cycling UK for, uh, you know, booking me to write this route. I'm an archeologist and a historian as well as being a professional bike tester. So this has just been an absolute gift. And also it's been a joy to ride. So, you know, hope you enjoy coming along for the ride with me. Anyway, no more chatting while standing still as peaceful as this is. Let's get the wheels rolling. And Tilford, Common and all the other bits of Heathland that are really a big part of today's ride. Uh, they're all part of the Surrey Hills. And I hadn't realized, you know, I'm about from up north, I hadn't realized what a big area this is. You know, I always kind of, I knew it from a mountain biking point of view. It's obviously a lot of the mountain bike companies and magazines are based down here. So I know all about, you know, they're riding from social media and photo shoots and stuff. And it's, oh, I hadn't realized if you know how to link it together, like Kieran obviously does, such an amazing network of these kind of sandy, fast draining trails. And, you know, I keep going past really tempting single track all the time. You know, there's nothing to stop you going and having a play at any points on these routes, but... So if you want to augment your journey with something a bit more exciting than these sections like this, the transit sections, then, you know, all that bit just looks like a single track. You can just smell it. I'm sure the locals know exactly what's in there in every section of Heathland, but, you know, such fantastic riding. So I'm gonna pop through this gate and uh, get back onto the route. Because while chatting to you, I've come off the route, but you do have to be pretty aware with your navigation. Another little wood and another RSPB nature reserve and another little bit of single track that you just wouldn't know how to link up normally. Another bit of solitude here in Surrey, on the edge of some more Heathland. You know, if you look at this map, if you look at this route on a map, there's definitely sections where you're like, oh, why are we looping all the way around there? We're just like throwing a big old hoop there just to come back to almost where we started. And then you start riding it and it's just like, I am so glad I did that extra little loop. Time and again that's happened. Certainly loads yesterday and again already today. You're just like, thank you. Thank you for just taking me out of my way. And taking me out of taking the fastest, most direct route. That's the whole point of escaping on your bike like this. Just to, to escape. <laughs> yeah, I've said it, you know. Oh, it's just, these three days have been amazing. It's such a holiday, it's such a release, such a holiday. I mean, I'm lucky to ride my bike a lot. I can call riding my bike work. 
But even just having these long days where I don't have to stress about the route, I just have to pay attention to my GPS rather than chatting and going the wrong way like I did for the last segment. But, ah, oh, yes. I'd forgotten how good, you know, you get bound up in everything and you forget how good it is just to find a little bit of time and just go and explore somewhere entirely new. You know, it's not four or five hours drive away from me. You start in Swindon, it's not far. And yet it's this complete other world, complete lam other landscape sandy trails like this. It's not a thing in Yorkshire. It's such a beautiful release. Can I about the headwind? You know, just means I can just back off a little bit, enjoy the view. Oh, euphoric moment. I just hope I can surf that all the way into the finish. And then another little fun little descent down into the drops. You know, where these gravel bikes make things really fun. Because they make little sections like that a treat. You know, that would be just boring on a state-of-the-art mountain bike. But here, here it's a real little challenge. You know, you never know quite right what's around that corner. And then when you get to better made sections like this, they're just so swift and so quick and effortless. They're a gift for it. Oh, add up. And there's another trail user. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Well, uh, the bridge is a definite no-go. It's got no deck on it. And if you look at the OS map, it says there's a Ford and it's not too cold. And most of my bags are at the top of my bike and that water bottle at the bottom could do with a wash. So let's try it out, eh? Uh, if anything, this could be uh, an absolutely wonderful shot for the blooper reel. Let's go. Okay, this is deep. This is deep. Come on, I think the Ford's there. Yeah, come on. There you go, shallow a bit. We're still going. No, we're off. <laughs> yeah, too much steering, not enough forward motion. Never mind, we're through. <laughs> ah, wasn't that cold? It's refreshing. Who needs fresh socks? And here we are now, right on top of French and Common. And here a busy road somewhere but I cannot see anything but this beautiful flowering heather and sandy trails a couple of friendly horse riders a few people out running I had no idea you could do this I'm sorry the south of England made your reset I know I guess that's French and Ponds over there Wow! <laughs> yeah, this is the Surrey Hills, I guess. What a fantastic place! Who knew? Well, I guess all the people who come up here to this National Trust area knew, but I hope a wonderful spot. Morning! Bike on your left hand side, please. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers. And obviously, you know, we've been riding all these routes with other shared, you know, they're all shared use routes. If it's a bridle way, you can come on it on a horse, you can walk on it. So, you know, just relax. I'm going all the way to Winchester today. What does it matter if I ease up slightly? Just be nice, say hi. Be a good ambassador for this trail, please. It's that way we can get more of them. And that has to be a good thing. 
Anyway, sermon over. Camera going off. I'm going to enjoy the sandy single track. And because this area, you know, a long time back, it used to basically be the seabed, it's mostly sand. So, you might have to put a bit more effort in, channel your Dutch beach racing vibes to get some sun sections, but it's a beautiful, quick growing surface to ride on. Very consistent. If that was a moorland up north, I'd have been up to my axles in that, and as it is, I'm just skimming over the top on silvery goodness. Just mind your front wheel. I like to have a bit of a grab at that on occasion, but... Woo! <sighs> yes, more of this please, and I'm pretty sure that's what Kieran's got planned for me. He's following these little blue markers here. Oh! And again, another bit of descent. Well, I've actually checked and there's a turn at the bottom here, so... Is it there? Or is it down the bottom box? Ah, maybe it's down the bottom. Forty-five meters. Wow, who says yeah? There's Silver. Yeah, there's my blue mark. <laughs> Wasn't the most auspicious descent, but yeah, you know, don't get too carried away. These places are like a maze. I will say that. You know, it's very easy to get off track. Because, you know, obviously you're looking at the trail and if it's a bit technical, that's where your concentration is. So, have a regular stop and have a kind of a vague idea of what the trail's going to do next. Or, if you hit that section, just try and keep some general awareness. And then it'll be obvious, if, you know, if you're meant to be turning right, then when you suddenly start veering left, you'll go, hang on a minute. This isn't supposed to be right. It's when you start swooping and whooping, whee, ha, then it's all too easy. Kind of lose track and then, like yeah, I've got a backtrack, so I'm going to check here. Am I going the right way? Yeah, still going the right way. And just for the record, uh, this is what you're looking for, these uh, Surrey Hills cycle route, these little grey markers there. Uh, I mean there's permissive bridleways as well and I've seen other route markers but all the way through today and some of yesterday uh, I've been picking up these, oh no mostly today been picking up these Surrey Hills cycle markers so if you want a nice visual cue just look for them obviously when you're in the Ridgeway you've got the black sign post so you know help yourself out find out what the local guideposts are and it will just I mean you're not glancing at the GPS as much. And some of this Heathland even though it's not Salisbury Plain, but you're going to meet some guys in camo and some Cheers. big green wagons. So, you know, keep your eye out for uh, red flags. Don't touch it, anything suspicious. Be prepared for the occasional rustling in the bushes. And be thankful, but because the army use areas like this, that's why. They're still open, you know. They're not a housing state in what well, must be some of the prime building land in Britain. Still got these wonderful, I mean, massive areas. It's funny when you're doing it on the map, you kind of just go up. It's only a small little area, but you know, the impression of that from riding this morning is it's just the whole south of England is this amazing. Prehistoric seabed modern heath wonderland. Yeah, I mean, okay, some of the sandy climbs. They're a little bit taxing. Lower your tire pressures, people. Keep your steering straight. That's what I'm learning. But, oh, just, you know, like I say, I could have dodged out of this on the road. Saved myself probably an hour. Especially, you know, if I hadn't got stuck in a board without a bridge and but you know I'm having experiences that are being cheesy I can't be cheesy that artisan cheese place I went past just before the ford isn't open for two days but I want to come back I want to bring the girls here I want to bring my wife here 
take a bit you know longer maybe who cares but just come out here this is just amazing it's been so refreshing such a cleanser Okay, detox in a damn star oh i think we go this way whoop sandy corner yep don't detox in a damn spa. Don't put cucumber slices in your eyes. Put some miles under your wheels. Ah, oh, it's just been amazing. So refreshing. I mean, don't make me tell you how to relax, but ah, oh, this worked for me. Drink it in. These are rare places and rare moments. You know, I know, kind of, I'm familiar with the route from writing it up on Google Earth. Lols. But being in it, experiencing it for real, is just such a different experience. These are just a green patch on the screen. Green block on an OS map. And some pictures on the RSPB on National Trust website. But, ah, to be amongst it. Oh, getting all poetic. What is this route doing to me? Went to this hard northern bike tester. Right, oh, it's rubbish this. No? Crikey, I'm liking the south of England. Karen, what have you done? What have you done? Oh, beautiful. And it's sandy, struggling Bahama Beach in the middle of Surrey, nonsense way. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. So this place, to bikes, to Cycling UK. <sighs> my wife and family for letting me run away for a bit. And just, I'm gonna be so much nicer when I come back. I might have managed to be nice for hours. <laughs> but then I remember moments like this. With the purple heather and the warm breeze and the fact my sleeves are off and it's actually pretty warm and pleasant and headwind doesn't really matter when I'm only doing 10k an hour. I'm just, uh, might take a while to get to but light until nine. Nobody else worrying about me. Want a cup of tea? I'll have a cup of tea. Still got two pies left. Oh good lord I am waffling. Shut up, Kesteban. This has been a surprise, all this beautiful heathland. That's the take home. Fast forward to this bit, miss out the last five minutes of your wasted life on this video, but. Ah. Oh, enjoy this. Yes, I certainly am. And here I am again, being possibly the world's worst route guide composer saying I don't know where I am actually but I do know this sunken road somewhere in Surrey has seen some amazing things over its thousands of years people have been driving cattle down here making their way over the hill and in a moment it's just me steady turn of the pedals and the whispering trees and you know, tune in and listen to what those big trees are saying the stories they could tell you about the people who've come up here and down here of all ages through all the ages I mean this is an ancient, ancient land that's been populated 10,000 years since the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers came across. You know that at least, if not before. So even if, you know, you're not immediately got a henge in front of you or an ancient, you know, medieval manor house or farm to one side, you know there's not one far away. And actually, it's these sections where it can just let your mind wander. Just think about that. Look at it. Now the roots of the trees there. What have they seen? What, what was going on when that was an acorn? Or whatever seed that is. 
you know. And I guess that, you know, that's the beauty of this route. It's not some A to B smash fest hell. It certainly ain't the most direct route I could have taken to Winchester today. But think of the lives this has seen and influenced, you know? You had a brilliant idea driving a cattle up here. I had a lousy idea. Who got mugged? Who thought, yeah, do you know what? I'm going to ask them to marry me. Oh, oh my God. I've realised I am sick of them. Whatever. All those little dramas and soap operas. I was like, oh, damn it. I've lost my stone axe. You know, that some archaeologist finds hundreds of years later. Oh, thousands of years later. Or whatever. Little dramas. I love doing that. But I really ought to concentrate on this technical section of the trail as well. So, nonsense over. Nadri riding, negotiated. <laughs> well, I'm going to look down, it probably isn't even the route, knowing my progress today. No. Nope. Ah, <laughs> see, that's why you don't look down. Yes, you lose the flow. But yeah, no. Wahoo says, this is the way to go. So, better mark this down on the things to be aware of from a technical point of view. Sidebar, did quite a lot of that today, to be fair. <laughs> I might treat myself to a lower gear too. And I've just stopped here, we're right up the top of the Devil's Punch Bowl now. Uh, this is the sailor's stone to mark where a sailor was murdered uh, by highwaymen. Uh, back in the 17th, back in the 18th century. So, you know, this was the main turnpike road uh, over from London towards Portsmouth. You know, you can see way, way back over the Surrey Hills. That's where I've been riding this morning and also way back over there, Swindon probably. And hopefully just up there, a National Trust, uh, hopefully just up there, a National Trust tea shop. But yeah, been quite a climb to get up here. Uh, I didn't actually know where I was on the route. And then suddenly I got kind of halfway up after a long climb and went, Thursley, that's near the Devil's Horseshoe. Because this, you know, the, sorry, the Devil's Punch Bowl, because this whole scooped out area, obviously, you know, comes from the Devil having a fight back in prehistoric times or, well, back in mythical times, I guess, you know, scooped the earth out, threw it at, you know, another god or someone he was angry at. I can't remember the exact story, but, you know, this is a proper place of myth and folklore and legend. And, and yet, you know, you can see London from here, probably, if you know where to stand. Amazing. I've gone, I've gone all quiet and reverent again. This route keeps doing that to me. It's not my normal shouting and yabbering about bike statistics. It's just, this is the other side of cycling. This is where cycling can get you. This is this, is this beautiful state of mind, these beautiful places. <sighs> and relax. Well, that was a bit of a shock. Okay, so you come over the Devil's Punch Bowl and you know, you're in this amazing place of history, this wild top. You know, you can't, you can't even see the A3, even though it runs straight through. <laughs> Hello. Morning. And then you straight into Hindhead. I mean, literally from the, from the car park, you suddenly straight back into it. Now, that was a bit of a shock. And then you're running down the side of the A3. I mean, it's all... Actually, it was less, way less built up than I thought. Because you're kind of straight down Portsmouth Road, nice quick road, and then dive off onto Cycle Path. And then, you know, a couple of minutes later, you're in Bramshot Common, and there's a big cow. Hello, mate. <laughs> oh, I love this route. It's just, it's full of surprises. Four-legged, fauna, flora, amazing. Oh, here we are again, into another MOD training area, so, again, watch out for uh, people in the bushes. Do I want to go that way? Yeah, ah, I think I do. Well, this is definitely on the uh, spicier side of the gravel bike curriculum. <laughs> hey -ho. You want to make sure your bags are secure down here. 
Oh, no. And then uh, a little drag up the far side. Oh, cafe legs from uh, the punch bowl. Getting a bit of a rude awakening. Like you say, again, this route is just proving a lot more fun. Sorry, Cycling UK. You're prepared to give people more of a challenge than I gave you credit for. And well done for it. Because, yeah, you can always walk. No shame in that, but... If you don't have to. Thanks to me SRAM wide range and me zip wheels and this Santa Cruz Stigmata or whatever you're riding. By the way, there will be a totally separate video talking through the bike and all the kit I brought on this journey and there'll probably be separate test videos on the wheels and this new SRAM wireless gearing as well so I'll try and put a link up here to some of them or I'll link at the end but you know because from a testing point of view 350k is a good big slab of mileage certainly in these conditions but flawless so far fingers crossed it stays that way while I get on with enjoying some more single track even though I can hear there's a motorway literally just over there that's the beauty of this route folks yet again <laughs> and I've actually just had to come back up just to ride this again, just to kind of show you this amazing sunken lane. Really, really long descent of Bramshot through this amazing, just deep channel. Incredible trees just springing out from the moss. Wow! Just wow! Fantastic bit of section. Just more green. Amazing tunnels. Green, this beautiful back road. We're in the middle of everything down here. You know, you look on the map and this is just such a busy area, but you would never know it. So quiet. Not even seeing any traffic. It's these amazing old roads, smell of wood smoke. Incredible old trees. Ferns, deep banks. It's like Devon down here. Little houses peeping in, big gateways. Wow, English country lane riding. At its finest, I'm gonna say it. Yeah, yeah, it's lovely here. And yeah, still, you know, it's not Yorkshire, but it's beautiful. Just had a lovely long roll down through Longmore Camp, but when you get to the bottom here, the trail looks like it carries on that way, but make sure you just come around to the left here and through the gate. There is a little bridleway sign, but otherwise, quite easy to miss. And now, I'm zipping down, I'm steaming down, I guess. <laughs> the old uh, Liss Riverside Railway Walk, which is the old Longmore Camp Military Railway uh, connected the military camp to the main line for all their supplies. So I we'll should be doing another military railway. Well, a railway of military significance coming up later as well. All you uh, rain squatting fans. But for now, on we go into Liss and across the plain for a bit and then uh, onto the South Downs Way. Guess who went the wrong way and has ended up sitting on his seat pack <laughs> trying to get back to the proper trail on some uh, quite steep little bits of single track. Oh. Not scalping. <laughs> there we go, that's the trail. <laughs> Quite a fun little detail of that, not gonna lie. 
quite enjoyed that. There you go, in the proper way. Yeah, this looks like more the kind of route Cycling UK would expect. It's all good though, eh? Capable machines, these. Kind of cruise after all. And if you properly want to get your off-road drills, then Rogate Bike Park is in here somewhere. And uh, I wouldn't suggest taking a gravel bike around there, but you can hire proper mountain bikes, get coaching and all sorts. So, yeah. If you've discovered a love for single track on this uh, little excursion, then get stuck in. And now we're just pulling up onto the South Downs Way and Quebec Cottage there. This little hamlet called Quebec. I've done some history for a bit, but it's actually called Quebec. Because in World War II, they have some Canadian soldiers from Quebec stationed here for D Day. There you go. Another little bit of history along the way. And I have to say, I was expecting this climb to be a bit of a pig. But no, not at all. Very mellow, nice gradient. So far, I know it might kick my teeth in around the corner, but all out of Rogate and in Rogate Forest, they were pretty stiff, you know. But yeah, this has been really mellow so far. So, I don't think there's too far to the top. Happy days. Okay, so just twiddled up the hill. We are now officially on the South Downs Way. Another, you know, proper ancient driveway. Kind of the ridgeway of, well, the South Downs, I guess. <laughs> Who would have thought? And one thing I am rapidly realizing is that the South Downs Way is not the ridgeway. It does not just nicely flip along the top of the ridge line, nice and flat. It is a big old roller coaster. You're either going down or you're going up. So do not underestimate this third day and be prepared to be looking forward for a cup of tea at Queen Elizabeth Park. Quite a lot. Because I know I am. Again, just look at oh. And then you start mm, about your legs, and then you're like, but look, <laughs> look at this incredible landscape. Look at it. Listen to it. Listen to its stories. Amazing. Again. And down we go. <laughs> and this beautiful place. It's Queen Elizabeth Country Park. And I'll admit, I wasn't calling it beautiful a minute ago. I just pulled off a rather steep fire road into it, and then that fire road peeled off to South Downs Way, and it was a trench full of slippery flint. Uh, but now, back in this beautiful mix of trees, rolling downhill. route is you know, doing its magic again. Soothing those miles away, but I may have said this already, do not underestimate the final day. When you look at it, it's like on a big map, you know, big map view, which is not that far away from the Farnham area. But as you tell you, I don't think it's been far enough already. And I'm still not. I'm still not. There, where to go? Uh, I'm have a refuel with the cap here. And then, happy days. I must have done some climbing. I guess it's just going down a long way. That would explain why my legs have been complaining. And obviously, you know, this is a popular area with families and stuff, so don't go too crazy. And if you want to have a rowdy time, there are mountain bike trails in here for you. So go do 
Fat on those. Wow. Well, this is incredible. <laughs> Literally just crossed the Southampton Portsmouth Main Road, sneaked under that from Queen Elizabeth Park. I'm into this incredible amphitheatre, heading up onto the ridge line there. And uh, yeah, really glad I just had a load of soup and uh, a hot chocolate because I'm not feeling icky at all. I am not feeling icky at all. Hell no. Right. Siege mode. Like I say, South Downs way. The Downs have ups. Lots of them. So, this is Bunser Hill. Highest point, one of the highest points in Hampshire. Yeah, that's the sea over there. Portsmouth Southampton way, I guess. The sea geography ain't great down here. But, anyway, like everything else on this route, it seems it's, it's a nature reserve, it's a site of archaeological interest, with a hill fort, and, uh, oh, it's an unexploded mortar testing range too, as well. So, if you're skipping about amongst the rare butterflies or going to have a look at the earthworks and fortifications, don't go picking up the rusty things. <laughs> But mostly, you know, it, it was a stinker of a climb, I'm not going to lie. But mostly, you're up here for the beautiful views. Even though it's overcast today, still, you know, it's a proper view. Woo! <laughs> but at least now we've got some elevation on our side. So, let's pick up speed from walking pace and crack on. Somewhere over there, I think, is Winchester. Final furlong, folks. You know, not so long ago, I was wishing the uh, end would come a bit sooner, but now I'm getting a bit sad. It's been, it's been a bloody wonderful ride, and yeah, should actually be on the single track over here. This is the official South Downs Way route, so I'll be a good boy and follow that, even if there is a transit man in the way. Well, you know, like in many places on this route, there's a road option right next to the off-road option. So, you know, pick and choose, depending how you're feeling. Anyway, a bit windy, big headwind. Probably can't hear me much, so I'll stop yabbering. Now this is a proper treat. <laughs> Little roofy drop off there. This has been going on for a while. I actually just stopped and turned the camera on because I kind of wanted to show you it. But this has been an awesome, yay! A little drop, taking descent. Made all the more interesting because it's slightly that chalk. <laughs> so again, these dip tires are really looking after me. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, that is a blast! But that's definitely another one to go on in. You know, be careful section at the start of the chapter. Quite a lot of those being added to the list. Oh, well that was, that was worth the grind up to both. So actually, to be fair, I've had loads of good descents. Just that grassy hole up the top of Bunser Hill. Well, that was, that was proper. That was full on. On a gravel bike, and that'd be fun on a full sus bike. But, <laughs> yeah, again, this trail proving it's more than just a history lesson. It's a, it's a PE lesson and it's a cracking play session as well in places. There we pop out and pop in again. More single track. Get in. Off we go! Ah, oh, I can stomach a few more uphills. If this is the style in which this route finishes, then... Yee! Those sandy sections early on took it out of me, but now these little sections are rolling really nicely. Average speed is 
Scott and with two again. <laughs> in places on the climbs it's been uh, single figures. Quite small single figures as well, but now we're getting some groove and some speed back on. But, you know, don't just get your head down. Appreciate where you're riding through. I mean, obviously, I'm hemmed in at the moment, but when it pops out, the views of the dams, even when it's slightly overcast like this, it's been wonderful. Yeah. That's the free ride kids say. Ah. Ah. Yes. Good times. This is old Winchester Hill. Nothing to do with actual Winchester, but Iron Age Hill for the Bronze Age Barrow site. So this is a place of place with a lot of history. Just had a quiet sit with the pork pie. Got a very contemplative and final furlong of this journey now. Yeah, and the descent all the way off. Old Winchester Hill to be honest. Has been an absolute hoot. That steep bit and then some flowing bit next to cornfields. And then this last gravel section. That's been an absolute blast. That's for a proper springy we step as that. Cracking by all there. Drop off the big hills. Well, I think there's Beacon Hill and some other hills still to come, but yeah, that's uh, between there and Buxer. That's definitely. Well, here we go. Pistons about, old riverbed. South Down Way signs are blue now. They've been every colour going so far. And this is the Meon Valley Railway now. And you know, nice quick blast along the cycle path here. But a few miles further down the line was just before, you know, very early June 1944. Churchill, Eisenhower, Charles de Gaulle, Canadian Prime Minister, and oh, I can't remember, there was a fifth guy as well, Belgian? Maybe. Anyway, you know, the top Allied leaders were all, came down here in secret in a train, and the reason they stopped down there is because there's a really heavily sort of embankmented siding, so they knew they could pull the train into there if there was an aircraft attack. So they came down here because this whole area was teeming with troops ready for the invasion of Normandy, final phase of World War II. So they came down here and they had some of the last strategy meetings and then they all kind of dispersed into the countryside around here to uh, have a final stirring words for the troops before they got the landing craft and headed off. And uh, we're going to be going past another area shortly where Eisenhower addressed all the American troops just before D Day. So, you know, just come off prehistory up there on Old Winchester Hill. We're on an old railway here and then. It's got this particular World War II memory to it as well. So again, there's so much about this route. The history, just, you know, the fun of riding it. And it has been an amazing three days. Now just a little bit of road over to Beacon Hill and then we're not far from the finish. And I was saying before about the, uh, the natural amphitheatre where Eisenhower came to brief the American troops before D-Day and you know just think of that thousands upon thousands of young lads 
coming over the Atlantic and just about to embark and head across the channel. And, you know, how many of the people sat here didn't, didn't make it through those first few weeks or the next few months? There's some incredible history on this route. I've actually just dropped down the route's actually up on the ridge line there, but I just wanted to kind of have a little moment. I'm having a lot of little moments, to be honest, today. This is, you know, if you, if you acknowledge the history around here, this route, it really, you know, it gets in under your skin, it gets into your soul. It's been an incredible journey. And now, we're ending our little pilgrimage through English history. Coming over Twyford Down on the Pilgrim's Trail. I mean, there's actually a Roman road option just to the north of here, but that's now quite a busy main road. Don't you buy the cars I saw on it as I crossed it? You do not want to be going that way. Logical protesters for you know battles with developers in the 90s to uh, stop them tunneling through the hill. But as you can hear, unfortunately they lost. But the sheep are still enjoying it. So it's dropping down now. Another bit. Well, this must be one of the last bits in case of single track on the whole route. And there's the road. Thought that I'm going that way. Thank goodness. Because that's Winchester. It's over there. To be fair, you'd never guess there was a six lane motorway just over the hill. As I'm coming around the bottom. Castle Hill. Yeah, another fortified bit of topography. Prehistoric, Bronze Age, Iron Age, and then medieval. And then they stuck a church on top. So again, you know, this landscape is just loaded all the way through. So. I'm not quite finished my journey yet. Uh, I mean, just come down through St. Catherine's Hill, nature reserve, the castle up on the top. You know, yeah, another classic sort of example of this route, but you know, uh, I figured it better, I'd better off doing the sort of like full sign off here before we get into the center of Winchester. So there'll be a bit more filming after this. Uh, but just want to say thanks very much for coming on this journey with me. Thank you so much for Cycling UK for, you know, letting me write the guide for the book and for letting me come out and do this recce ride. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Hope it's given you some insight into kind of the character of the route and sort of bring it alive uh, through my handlebars and through what I've said. Coming through it, it's been an amazing experience. It really has. Uh, you know, I've gone through it on the map and I've you know, sketched out on Google Earth, but nothing, nothing can even touch kind of the emotions and the sensations you get from riding through this incredible landscape for real. I really have had some, you know, it's been, it's, as you'll have noticed, it's been a much more kind of poetic and uh, rambling and thoughtful day, this third day. Uh, I don't think that's just because I'm a bit tired after 350k, I think it's just you know, this has been an incredible route, an incredible experience. So I can't recommend you highly enough that you come and do it yourself. Uh, the guidebook should be out now. Uh, that'll give you the GPX files and it'll obviously give you loads of information about the route itself. It'll give you loaded with photographs. Uh, there'll be all the maps in there. There'll be accommodation links, you know, site points of interest links all the way through. So I'll put a link as to where you can get the guidebook from on there, obviously, if you've jumped ahead for some reason, uh, there's a part one and a part two uh, to this uh, route guide because I've done it in three parts, done it in three days, starting from Winchester round to, well, Uffington, uh, then Uffington down to Farnham area, and then Farnham through to uh, Winchester. Uh, one thing I would say, do not underestimate this final section. 
there's a lot of climbing and descending and it's very it's pretty technical in places and definitely physical demanding in other places plus uh, all the sandy heaths and stuff you know there's a lot of navigation to go on as well uh, so you know don't think you're going to breeze through this it's probably the hardest section of the route i would say in terms of nav physical and kind of skill levels as well so be prepared for that but uh just want to say thank you very much to uh gore for the clothing i'm wearing uh gyro for shoes and helmet uh red bull for the specs uh, I filmed it on a GoPro, uh, that's what I do normally, I'm a professional bike kit tester. So I'm going to be talking through the bike I've been using, it's a Santa Cruz Stigmata CC uh, with SRAM's new Force uh, Axis wide range gear set on it, it's actually a test bike from SRAM, it's got their new Zip Firecrest 303 wheels on, their new Zip uh, Service Course G4E gravel tyres. Uh, I've been using Altura's Vortex luggage and I have been, when I've been paying attention, I've not been getting lost because of that uh, Wahoo Roam GPS on there. Uh, bottles are from Fabric, tools are from Crank Brothers and I've been sitting on a Fabric saddle and staying safe on the roads with a Nog Rear Light. So thanks to all those guys. But most of all, Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to Cycling Kieran at Cycling UK for putting together an absolutely incredible route. And uh, yeah, well, I'm just gonna roll into Winchester now, point out a uh, few last details uh, as we go up this traffic-free route into the middle of town, up the old sort of old uh, dock area, and then uh, go and say hello to King Alfred himself in the middle of Winchester. So, that's the next bit. Could have done my sign off in here, to be honest. <laughs> Coming in alongside the old medieval walls. I think that's the old water mill over there. Yeah, you can just see it. Actually, that train goes over there. Yeah, just come up past the water mill. And there's King Alfred himself. The old boy, it wasn't that big in real life, but it was pretty big historically. Here we are again at the Westgate, where we started uh, three days ago. Uh, 350k later, 220 miles, whichever way you want to look at it. This has been an incredible journey through English history, and I've absolutely loved it. So, get the guidebook, go and do it yourself. Simple as that. <laughs>